Yeah, I feel strongly about taxes. Um, I don't have a, a complicated position on taxes. I just don't think we should have an income tax and we should repeal the 16th Amendment. That's about all. During, during the campaign, I would get a lot of questions. Their eyes would get big, and they said, well, well, how would you run the government? How would you pay for the government? I said, well, maybe the way we did before 1913. You know, we, we might have been able to do it. And uh, one time when I was being interviewed on, uh, uh, and I was in, a, in the Cannon building, and I was arguing the case for no income tax, and the interviewer said, he says, Congressman Paul, he says, how can you stand there and say that? He says, without the income tax, you wouldn't even have that building there. I said, this building was built before 1913. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, we do talk a lot about taxes. We don't need the income tax. We don't need the inheritance tax. And we don't need a lot of these property local taxes either. Uh, we need a lot less taxes. But you know what? Taxes are secondary to the main issue. The main issue is spending, and spending is a reflection of the appetite of the people for government. There's still more of them than us. They want, they want more stuff from government. They want to be taken care of from cradle to grave. They want free education and free medical care. They want to be the policemen of the world. They have no belief that deficits matter. And unfortunately, there were some conservatives that, uh, on the supply side group that said that deficits don't matter. We'll just stimulate the economy and pay these bills well you know if you can stimulate the economy and get more revenue that is great but that's only an excuse for cutting spending not for trying to balance the budget so we need a different attitude about the role of government that is the key question And for me, the uh, role for government should be very simple. It should be uh, to try to guarantee some of our liberties, Pr protect our liberties. How about protecting the concept of private property? Protect the idea of contract. No counterfeiting, even by the Federal Reserve. So what do we have now? We have a government that uh, owns the property. We pay rent to it. We can't do a thing with it without permission. They violate contracts. They're the biggest counterfeiters in the world. And uh, they, uh, they tell us everything, we, everything that we do, we have to get permission from the, from the government. So they are doing exactly opposite of what they're supposed to be doing. And they ignore the things that they should do. So uh, we, we have a tough job ahead of us. but. There's light at the end of the tunnel, but also there might be a, a downturn before that light appears. And that is, our, that is our big challenge. I believe that we're moving in the direction of a much, much more serious economic crisis. We're in the midst, we're in the midst of a financial breakdown, a financial crisis. Uh, it was built on fiat money, the dollar reserve standard, and it was unstable. And it is coming down, and it's not been allowed to just go down and rebuild it. It's been, it's been delayed. You know, they're working very hard up in Washington to prop up the prices of houses. And they're very, working very hard to stimulate house building, home building. And, uh, of course, the obvious should be the case. Let the prices go down and uh, don't subsidize anything. And maybe we can go back to work again. Yeah. You know, these, some of these programs are so silly. Uh, you take the cash for clunkers. Now, that's a real doozy. <laughs> That reminds me of the, uh, of the um, uh, program in the 1930s. Uh, I've been around a couple of years, but I don't remember the 1930s. <laughs> I was born in the 1930s. I uh, remember the World War II and a, a few like, like that. But in, in, the, in the Depression, their theory was most people lived on farms. 80% were outside of the big city. So every, a lot of people outside, and they say the farmers are the key to the economy. Their income is down. And therefore, they can't buy stuff, and they, if we could just take care of the farmers, uh, we'll be okay. But the prices were dropping, so they said, oh, the way to help the farmers push the prices up. So what they did was they said, all right, the prices are low because there's too much stuff, even though the people were starving. People are starving, and there's famine moving in on the land, and we're having all these problems. So they say to the farmer, you have to plow your crops under. 
And, and, and then the prices are going to go up. It was insanity. So this is what we do like with the Cash for Clunker uh, program. You take a perfectly good car and tell them they have to junk it, which means that the poor person who might have per bought a perfectly good car should, uh, you know, he won't have, it won't be available to them. And then when you make them sell one car and buy another one, they sell American cars and junk those and buy foreign cars, and that's supposed to simulate the auto industry here. So we, we do have a long way to go. We're in the midst of this crisis, but it's going to move along because every single thing that we do in Washington today in trying to correct this problem is, uh, it, it, it costs money. And there is no money. Uh, they can't squeeze any more tax money out of us. They're going to try, but, it, it, but it's not there. The deficits have exploded. They're over a trillion dollars. Who knows? It could be two trillion dollars this year. Nobody, nobody knows until the end of the year. Can you, can you imagine living in a time when the, a, a deficit, national debt increase, could be over a trillion dollars? And yet it still really hasn't hit us yet. Uh, the full effect of all this money printing and deficits and this weak economy hasn't hasn't destroyed the confidence in the dollar and uh, it's it's less than it was but there's still a tremendous amount of confidence people will buy and store and, and and put their money in dollars temporarily but this cannot continue just as the financial system built on a house of cards couldn't continue and we knew the malinvestment and the over expansion would have to give in there would have to be a collapse of the bubble just the same way with the monetary system. You cannot continue this and think the dollar is going to maintain value. It's losing value much faster than they will admit to because private sources tell us that, it, you know, the uh, CPI by private source, sources actually did dip pretty low and got as low as two, but it's back up to about five or six percent again. And, uh, and, and yet even that is not an accurate measurement of the dollar because if you're measuring the cost of government and the cost of medical care and cost of education and uh, cost of medication and, of, and repair bills and you're on a restricted income, uh, you might have an inflation rate of 10, 12 percent. So, and this, this will accelerate. This is going to go much higher. And the real story is, is that the confidence in the dollar is very shaky. It's there, but it's the confidence that keeps us from having runaway inflation and the destruction of the dollar. But confidence can be lost. Confidence is a subjective element that is worked into the value of a currency. And it depends on military strength and apparent uh, economic strength and wealth. But we're poorer. Our jobs are overseas. We don't have the industry we used to have. And uh, we're, we're really not the military power we think we are either. We, our, our, our military is much weaker than they admit. I mean, but they're, they're almost like they live in a different world. The military is down, the morale is down, the money is in there, and they're going looking for a couple more wars to fight. It makes no sense whatsoever. But no, we don't have to worry. It's not the military anymore because uh, it's, um, there's been a coup. Have you heard? It's the CIA coup. The coup, the CIA runs everything. They run the military. They're the ones who are over there lobbing missiles and bombs on, on these countries. It's not even the military that does it. The CIA runs this. And, of course, the CIA is every bit as secret as uh, the uh, Federal Reserve, and yet Think of the harm that they have done since they were established in, since World War II. They are a government unto themselves. They're in businesses. They're in drug businesses. And, and, uh, and they take out dictators. We need to take out the CIA is what we need to do.